When you first open the Skyline game engine, you are you, you were given these screens here. These are new screens, new scenes that you can uh, put in. There's your, your tech demos, basic navigation, fake volume lights, third person collision camera, zombie patrols, things like that. And you've got your projects where you can uh, add. This is a new project. You can add thumbnails to it, uh, project description, uh, the location of the project. Uh, you can isolate it from other libraries because you can have se several libraries in the assets manager. So all of the assets that are uh, used in, this, in, the, in the project are uh, only available th to this project which is good if you have several projects on the go at the same time. And click OK and it will open the default scene for you. Up here we've got new scene, open scene, save scene, save scene as. Uh, you've got your refresh resources for if you change any scripts or anything like that. You can re, re, uh, refresh it all up here. Entities, scripts, or you can have it automatically do it itself. Up here you have the metrics, which FPS count, poly count, triangles, things like that. Mouse location, memory usage. Then we have the game manager which is I'll cover in a separate video because it's uh, quite technical this one. Then we have the mesh editor where you can set your LOD, uh, LODs, um, extract animations to to a mesh and things like that. Then we have the asset manager which uh, automatically defaults into the projects if you uh, open a project. Uh, you've got a separate user library where you can import your your asset packs and things like that to your own user uh, library whereas if you uninstall Skyline this doesn't get touched. Then you've got the system library which come it's all the uh, assets that come with the Skyline game engine. Uh, we'll touch on the asset manager in a different video for importing assets. Then we have the material editor, so if I click select the ground disk and we'll go to the material editor it'll show you load bios, culling mode, then you have your your textures which is diffuse, normal roughness, specular displacement etc etc. You've got your different workflows in here, PBI Metallic, Specular, Unlit or Custom. Next we have Detail lay Layers. These are good for adding like bullet holes on a uh, on a wall or you know things like that if you want it to be a permanent thing and not actually um, put in there when you actually fire your gun, you can actually put things like graf uh, graffiti on walls and things like that with, with this which is it's, it's quite good idea. Then you got your enable alpha, uh, alpha reject and, and that so if you've got um, any assets say a tree with leaves you can, uh, you can you can make the leaves look pretty good, double sided then you've got your special options which is wind and some other options which are in development. Uh, you've got your UV, contro uh, UV controls here, it's good for making like conveyor belt scrolling and things like that. I don't want to save it. You can also access that through the right click uh, menu and edit materials. Then we have the GUI editor the GUI, which is, this is the visual one, visual editor, um, or you could use the 
code bound editor for GUIs. It uses HTML and CSS for styling. Next we have the scripts editor which is a uh, it's, it's quite powerful really. You've got your uh, snippet manager here which will do join your strings, uh, looping, things like that. You've got your events, damage system events, sensors. We'll, we'll cover these in other tutorials. We've also got other pre-made functions like 2D sound, 3D sound, things like that. And we've also got your API, which is, you know, all the hooks that have been made available to us in in Lua, which is quite good. And then all the functions that you've make, made come up in the function list over on the right hand side, so you can just click them and it'll highlight them straight away. You can fold functions, so you can once you're finished with one, you can fold it up and make it a lot prettier for yourself. Um, you've also got your error log here, so if you check your script for errors and the errors will, will come up in here and you can clear, clear that by clicking the, that button here at the bottom left hand side um, the script editor also comes with a IntelliSense so say if I do GUI dot uh, well, try entity entity and keep on typing, it brings up the available functions, which is, is, is quite powerful. Again, we'll we'll get more into these as um, the tutorials progress. Then we've got the visual modules, which you, if you've ever used uh, Unreal, then you will know from their visual editor that this is very similar. Basically, pull your different modules, what you want to use to make up your uh, functions, and just basically click connect them like you would in the uh, UE4. So it's just a, for non-coders really. I, I, I don't use this. Never have, never will. After that we have game object system which is at the bottom these are the assets what come with a skyline game engine where you can stamp any object to the ground uh, and also can use a uh, snapping as well it's it's quite quite a good system to be quite honest uh, once you've set up your presets with your own assets you can uh, have them in this system so you can automatically rotate them see if you if you place in any grass or anything like that see if we've got anything any rocks uh, let's. so every time you click it you'll get a slightly different variety of it or you can set it like that and it'll also snap to the bounds of another ob object that, that's there so you can stack them let's get rid of that Burden you're saying. We'll get into these more uh, as the tutorials progress. Then you've got your environment editor, which is your skyboxes. You can make your own. Uh, you, know, th you can make make your own using the materials what are there. So you can have a nice starscape for a uh, space game or anything like that. You've also got your dynamic sky, which is the time of day system. So you've got a variety of different settings here, like changing the moons and planets, things like that. Uh, clouds. Uh, we'll, as far as I'm aware, they, they will be putting vol volumetric clouds back in. Um, that was in uh, Generation 1. This is Generation 2 now. So we'll be putting that back in and an ocean system. At the moment, we'll just have to use uh, water planes, which... Which do look quite nice, but 
you don't it's harder to control the caustics and things like that because of the it's material based on the plane so I can't wait for the ocean system to be brought back in right, after that we've got the spline path ed editor which is good for creating um, patrols things like that uh, patrol points so uh, let's create one path it's been that long since I've used this Anyhow, uh, spline paths are very, very, very handy for creating um, like patrol points, things like that. If you don't want the AI to actually do it itself, you can you can assign your NPCs to a path and they'll, pat they'll patrol it, or a camera for a flyby, you know, things like that, which are, is quite handy. And you've got your nav, med nav mesh editor. Where you can build your nav mesh and test it. You've got various test uh, things on here. So and yeah, nav mesh. <laughs> what can you say? A standard thing. What's this one? This is a new one. Scene renderer display. So uh, that could be could be the renderer settings where over here in the right hand side where you've got set and presets right time of day sunny yeah things like that and that opens up the start screen again there are your different layouts default and full screen Back to default, then you've got your runtime buttons here. So you can mute all audio on the scene with that. You can play any animations such as particles, what you may have in the scene, without actually playing this machine. It just just displays the particles and that, and allows you to work on them. Then you've got the running editor, and you've got run in a separate player so basically it'll run outside of uh, Skyline and show, show your project so far up here we have the new scene new scene from Tempera, open scene uh, export, things like that uh, editor, properties your different projects, edit project settings views, metrics, things like that then you've got all your editors under the editors tab there's quite a few of them Sh shadow editor tr translation visual modules weapons editor so weapons editor you add your weapons in here with the amount of ammo automatic shooting uh, damage damage to do muzzle effects tracer effects audios uh, <coughs> animation lengths things like that uh, it's just a nice tidy way place to keep them so you can refer to them in code later on. Then you've got your plugins which you can make your own plugins like the ecosystem in Skyline is uh, made through the plugin system um, it runs on the QT system and lower hooks it's quite powerful. Then you've got your render remote forward and deferred, daytime nighttime basically, uh, debug solid wireframe, point cloud then you got your your play states might play the game in engine, outside engine, animate the scene so you can see your particles mute audio, audio and reload re resources which are up here the, these ones you got your archives for making encrypted pack files of your scene mesh conversion, mesh merger, so if you've got s several meshes that you want merged into into one so it, call, uh, so it uses less draw calls then you can uh, use the mesh, mer mesh merger invert normals the usual stuff and then you've got your help menu which is like uh, the home website, the forums, asset store, user manuals which is the uh, 
lower script references, API hooks, check for updates, license information and about. So we've got the game objects down here which can be stamped anywhere onto a scene. I can be closed on that, open right click, game objects. Here you have your console, console which displays any uh, any traces that you use in your code or messages that you use in your code to you see if you if you're running a specific function and you want to know that that function is running, you can get it to to print to the console in here. Any errors what come up will also be shown up in here. Then you've got your scene entity list, where all the all the entities within a scene will be shown up in here. You can create separate folders for different things, say like grass like grasses, I'll put all your grasses in there and it keeps them nice and tidy expand folders and that lot you can remove folders rename folders and do a search over on this side ugh, what am I doing? Right. over on this side you've, you've got your properties Scene settings, terrain edit editor, which also has the height, so you can raise and lower ground. You can paint different layers onto it, um, and you can also add roads and paths, which is a mesh on top of the on top of the terrain, and the terrain gets deformed when you add them. And right at the end, we've got the particle editor. So if I quickly find a particle, fire effects, put a load of them in there, press play, you can see the particles in there. Now if I select a particle, that usually shows a particle editor, uh, press animate buttons, ah, there we go. You need to animate it first using this button here. Uh, you've got your emitter, emitter types, emitter movements, you've got your particle settings, material settings, and that you need to, for your different particles that you might have in your scene.